I think all of us get a very eerie feeling when we look at a child lost under such tragic circumstances. And today we're talking about the unsolved murders of many people, including John Benet Ramsey and Ennis Cosby, and how people like profilers are used uh, in cases like this to try to find some type of clue to crack the case. Uh, Robert, you are a profiler. You're the one who gave us the term serial killer. And you were saying that profilers come in and find certain things, mainly at the crime scenes, um, that, that, uh, that maybe investigators have overlooked. You're getting some feelings about the John Benet Ramsey case. And, and like most of us, you too agree that you think it's somebody close to the case. I do. Close I, to the family. Yeah, I, th I think the child knew the uh, individual uh, that killed her. I think that that individual knew the child. Mm -hmm. When you use profiling, uh, we also um, have a handwriting expert here. Uh, profiling, does that, is there a difference between using handwriting expertise and profiling, or is that all part of the same thing? Uh, it's, it's a very different uh, uh, approach. It's, uh, they're interrelated, but it's, uh, handwriting is a, its own approach. It's, mm -hmm. You have the technical handwriting, and then this, the, uh, my part would be a psycholinguistic analysis of the text of that handwriting, the psychology of the language. And those who study that, that uh, the technology of that language, you might say, are graphologists or handwriting experts. Uh, joining us now is one of the country's leading graphologists, uh, Sheila Lowe. She has studied the handwriting of many infamous killers and says that there are warning signs in their own script. That ransom note that, that so many of us have locked in our heads, what does that type of thing tell us? Well, if I could see a copy of it, I, I could give you a behavioral profile of the writer. They're keeping it under close wraps, and I don't know anybody who's seen it. But we do know people who have gone in and had to do, ha like, the, like the, the, uh, the maid who was there, the housekeeper, who had to write out some of the letters. What types of things do you look for? Well, and can somebody fake it? Yeah, there's, there really is two different approaches there. Comparing the maid's writing to the ransom note would be not a behavioral profile. That's simply deciding whether two people wrote the same script. But behavioral profiling from a handwriting is to determine the characteristics of the personality. They're really very distinct and separate. And I do both. And also, like Mr. Ressler, c consider the content. But the handwriting is really like a frozen picture of your personality, all of your personality. And it shows who you really are inside, regardless of what you try to show to the world. Handwriting is behavior in public. What do you mean by that? It reveals your ego strengths, your fears, the way you think, the way your inhibitions, the emotional release, what your motivations are. Now, if I'm a, if I'm a killer and I'm going to write a note, I'm going to change my handwriting. Can you still get through there and find out who the real writer is? No problem. No problem. No problem. Now, how do you say that? Why? Well, that is, in a case like the Ramsey case, if you've got a lot of handwriting, there are well over 2,000 variables in handwriting. And the things that people think to change the most are the size and the slant, which are sort of minor signs. There's so many other things that if you write, you know, a whole page or more, certainly your real personality is going to come through. So you might start off faking it, but right. by the end of that ransom note, you're going to start giving out telltale signs. That's right. Susan Smith case, the woman who sent her two children into the lake. Right. There was writing that you studied to help in that case as well. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, that was her confession letter. And in Susan Smith's case, she, it was certainly not something that I would have looked at ahead of time and said, this woman is going to kill her children. Mm -hmm. Handwriting only shows potential. But what it did show was um, an extreme buildup of tension and no release. Mm -hmm. It's very rounded, compact, close together. And um, you're looking at a sample of that now. Right. It, a lot of the letters butt up against each other, and then there's wide spaces between the words. She needed some release, and the tension built up to such a point that she happened to choose a very bad way of releasing. Mm -hmm. And I think under normal circumstances, she's not, quote-unquote, a killer type. Writing was also involved in the O.J. Simpson case. Yes. Um, the uh, so-called suicide note, which shows um, a lot of variability, which shows a, a very emotional character. And all of a sudden, letters will just pop up. 
And what like does that tell you? That the letter instability? The letter D or? in the word and that you have on the screen there. It's so much larger at the end. It shows somebody who has to have the last word. Mm -hmm. What about Ted Bundy, the serial killer? Ted Bundy's writing um, is a combination of a loose writing and a very rigid writing. And this is a major key in, in criminal handwritings. And again, we're looking at the whole picture, not any one factor. But if you look at the beginnings of his words, they have this long lead-in stroke, long, very long straight, and it has a little hook on the end of it, which looks like a harpoon. And it's an Ooh. indicator of really deep, seated hostility. My goodness. You also, uh, Jack the Ripper, back at the turn of the century, had, had some writing involved in, in his case as well. Tell us about that. Jack the Ripper's writing has a very strange spatial arrangement. The way the writing is laid out, mm -hmm. just the, the spacing between the words is strange mm -hmm. that, that a handwriting expert would notice that somebody else wouldn't. When we come back, Andrea, why don't you update us on the Ennis Cosby case? And Robert, why don't you tell us why that is not a, a case where profilers would absolutely be, be brought in? Also, when we come back, we're going to talk to a...